بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته How are you my students? I hope that you're happy and healthy and ready for today's lesson which is unit for grammar unit for grammar which means that we'll be taking a lot of exercises uh, today but before we do that if you remember in our previous lesson I asked you to work with a partner to create uh, a, a morally challenging situation or to create a dilemma then ask your students what would they do in this dilemma? What would they do in this situation? What is right and what is wrong? What is moral or ethical? And what is immoral and what is unethical? We also learned some fun facts about the uh, cheating in uh, American high school students, 86% uh, as we learned previously, 86% of high school students agree that most students do cheat 86% and we learned that uh, 9 out of 10 said that they had copied another student's homework and these are today's objectives to distinguish between the present hypothetical conditionals and past hypothetical conditionals so we have present and past when if clause is implied when the if clause is implied and used as if as though correctly so if I wanted to go downtown, I would take the bus. When someone says to you, if I wanted to go downtown, I would take the bus, I would use the bus. So this is an easy sentence. This is the if clause and this is the main clause. If I wanted to go downtown, I would take the bus. Do I want to go downtown? The one who said the sentence, me. When you hear me saying this sentence, do I want to go downtown? Of course not. But I would say to you, if I wanted to go, I would take the bus. This is, I ha um, this is a hypothetical or imaginary situation. So hypothetical means not real. Hypothetical, not real. Something that is, uh, something that didn't happen. Something imaginary. So again, this is a hypothetical or imaginary situation. You're saying that if something were true, this is what would uh, what you would do. If something if some things were true, this is what you would do. So again, if I wanted to go downtown, I would take the bus. Do I want to go downtown? No. That's why I told you if I wanted to go, I would use this method going by the uh, bus. This is again the sentence. If I wanted to go downtown, I would take the bus and focus on the word would here. Because if we change it here to might or maybe to could, if I wanted to go downtown, I might take the bus. If I wanted to go downtown, I could take the bus. Is there any difference in the meaning here? Would might or could is there any difference in the meaning so this is the question here how would this change the meaning if i change might could or would how would this change the meaning of course the meaning changes if i use uh, if i use might could or would but the question is how would this change the meaning would you are fairly certain this is what would you do again if you use would you are certain, 100% sure, this is what you would do. If you say might, this indicates that it's a possibility, maybe, but not certain. I might take the bus, I'm not sure. I might take the bus, maybe the taxi, I don't know. Could mean that it's possible. So could indicate the possibility. There is a bus that goes downtown but it's still not certain that you will take it. So this is the difference between would, might, and could. Would it indicates that you are sure this is what would you do. Might indicates a possibility, you are not sure. Could indicates the, uh, that it is possible, that there is a bus that's going downtown, but it's still not certain that you will take it. So let's read the uh, grammar here together. Present hypothetical conditional, uh, conditionals, conditionals meaning if, of course, versus past hypothetical conditionals. So, present and 
past. Focus here. We use present hypothetical conditionals to talk about imaginary situations. When we talk about the present hypothetical conditionals, we're talking about imaginary situations. The simple past tense is used in the if clause, even though it's present, but in the if clause, we use the simple past tense. Would, could, or might is used in the result clause, or we call it the main clause. So again, this is the present hypothetical conditional to talk about imaginary. The simple past tense is used in the if clause. Even though it's the present conditional, in the if clause, we use the past tense. And in the result clause, the other one, we use would, could, or might. Here's an example here, or two examples. If you asked me my opinion, I would tell you the truth. If you asked me, so this is the past tense here, my opinion, I would tell you the truth. If you asked me, so this is the uh, present hypothetical. If we knew where she lived, we could send her flowers. We could send her flowers. If we knew, notice here the past tense, where she lived, we could send her flowers. The, uh, uh, notice that both these situations are imaginary, hypothetical, and notice both of them are in the present, even though we used the past tense in the if clause. So let's jump to the past hypothetical conditionals. We use the past hypothetical conditionals to talk about things that did not happen in the past. So now we are talking about the past but we're talking about things that did not happen in the past. Things didn't happen. They are not real. They are often used to express regret. So when do we use this conditional, the past hypothetical conditional? We sometimes or often we use it to express regret. You regret something or criticism to criticize something. The past perfect is used in the if clause. So here the if clause, we use the past tense. Here the if clause, we use the past perfect. And we use would have, could have, or might have in the result clause. So the difference here in the if clause, in the present uh, conditional, we use the past tense. Here we use the past perfect. And here in the result clause, we use would, could, or might. Here we use would have, could have or might have in the result clause. Let's read some examples here. If I had tutored him, if I had tutored him, he might have passed the test. If I had tutored him, if I had tutored him, he might have passed the test, but I didn't tutor him. So this is uh, hypothetical, this is not real. The, the reality, is that I didn't tutor him, so he didn't pass the test. Again, another example, if Audra had been honest, she would not have gotten into trouble. Was she honest? No, because in the conditional here, the hypothetical, we're saying if Audra had been honest, if she was honest, if Audra had been honest, she would not have gotten into trouble. But Audra didn't tell the truth. This is the reality here. But Audra didn't tell the truth. So she did get into trouble. So when, uh, why do we use the past hypothetical conditionals? We use it to talk about things that didn't happen. And some we use it uh, most of the time to express regret or criticism. In these sentences, the if clause the if clause presents a condition or a situation, and the main clause presents a possible result. The main clause, possible result. Therefore, the main clause is often referred to the result clause. So the result clause, it is the main clause. Why? Because it gives us the result for the if clause. Jumping to another part of this lesson, implied conditionals implied conditionals. Sometimes the if clause is implied. 
rather than stated directly. What does it mean to be implied? It means you don't have to say it. You understand it. You don't have to say it. Imp that, that is what it uh, means to be implied. Implied, it means that you understand it. That's why you understand the situation. That's why you don't have to say the if clause. Let's take some examples now. Sometimes the if clause is implied rather than stated directly. You don't have to say it. For example, we would have helped you. We would have helped you. What's the, uh, the if clause here? If you had asked us. They don't say your friends, maybe your friends uh, walked in, you in, your, in your room and they, uh, and they uh, saw you cleaning the room. They said, we would have helped you. They don't have to say, if you asked us, we would have helped you because it is implied here. It is mutual understanding. Number two, I would have called the police if I had been there. So this is the if clause. You don't have to say it. It's implied. I would have called the police. What, what would I do without you? What would I do without you? So the, uh, the if clause here is if you weren't here. So this is what it means to uh, uh, imply about something. It means that you understand it. That's why you don't have to say it. Do these sentences include a result clause? Yes, of course. This is the result clause. But the if clause is implied. You don't have to state it directly. For example, here you come home and find your mother has cleaned your room. So you come home and find out that your mother cleaned your room. What would you say here? So let me show you the example. I would have cleaned it. I would have cleaned it. So you say to your mother, I would have cleaned it. So the if clause here is implied. Of course, uh, the if clause here, if you asked me, if you ask me, I would have cleaned it. But you don't have to say it because it is implied. It is understandable. Jumping on to another part here, as if, as though for unreal situations. As if, as though for unreal situations. Unreal from the name itself. Unreal, not real. We, we can use as if and as though plus a past or past perfect verb to suggest that something is unreal or untrue. Again, we can use as if and as though plus a past tense or a past perfect tense verb to suggest that something is not true, not real. Unreal or untrue. Let's see some examples here. He talks as if he were an expert in the field. He talks as if he were an expert in the field. Is he an expert? No. Another example. He talks as if he were the boss. Is he the boss? No. It's untrue or unreal. But he talks as if he is the boss. He talks as if he is an expert. Another example here. They act as though they had not cheated on the test. So you know that your friends cheated, but they don't know that you know. So they're acting normally. What do you say? They act as though they had not cheated on the test. So the reality is that they had cheated. So, but they're acting. So this is untrue or unreal. A note here, either was or where can be used with subjects just like here where again either was or where can be used with the subjects I he she or it so he can be where or was this is the note here either was or where can be used with the subjects I he she or it however where is considered more formal and generally used in writing where here he talks as if he were, we didn't say was. Both of them are correct, but were is uh, more formal and generally used especially in writing. Here's a language builder for you. The clauses in a conditional sentence can go in either order. The clauses, the if clause, this one, 
just uh, so you know the if clause, this is the if clause here, and this is the main clause or the result clause. You can begin with either one. If I knew the answer, I tell you, but remember the comma here. If I know the answer, I tell you, or you can say, I tell you if I know the answer, but if you begin with the result clause, don't put the comma. This is a whole one sentence. If you begin with the if clause, when you finish the if clause, put the comma, then continue with the main clause. So you can change the clauses as you like, but if you, if you begin with the result clause or the main clause, this is one whole sentence. When the if clause is first, it is followed by a comma, just like we said. When the result clause is first, there is no comma. Exercise A, rewrite each sentence as a conditional. The first one is already done. My sister doesn't know what happened, so she's not mad at me. Write it as, rewrite it as a conditional sentence. If my sister knew what happened, she would be mad at me. Very good. Number one, Ibrahim doesn't take good care of himself. That is why he gets sick so often. Rewrite these two sentences as a conditional. Conditional means if we have if clause and the result clause. So rewrite the sentences as conditionals. So let's take number one. What's the correct answer here? So let's see the answer. If Ibrahim took past tense here, past tense, it means this is a, a present hypothetical. If Ibrahim took good care of himself, he wouldn't get sick. Very good. Number two, he had an accident because he wasn't driving carefully enough. He had an accident because he wasn't driving carefully enough. So if he was, so let's see the correct answer. If he had driven more carefully, begin with the if here, he wouldn't have had an accident. If he had driven, if he had driven, because this is a past, uh, past hypothetical. We use uh, if he had uh, driven, we use the past perfect, if you remember. More carefully, he wouldn't have had an accident. Very good. Number three, I took the courses because I didn't know how hard it would be. I took the courses. So, let's see the answer here. If I had known how hard this course would be, I wouldn't have taken it. If I had known how hard this course would be, I wouldn't have taken it. Number four, he isn't my son, so I can't tell him what to do. He isn't present here. He isn't my son, so I can't tell him what to do. Yes, very good. If he were my son, we use the past tense here. If he were my son, I could tell him what to do. Number five, I'd like to help the poor, but I have no extra money. I would, of course here, I'd like to help the poor, but I have no extra money. Very good. If I had extra money, I could help the poor. Number six, you don't pay at uh, you don't pay attention in class, so you don't understand the lessons. So what's the answer here? You don't pay attention in class, so you don't understand the lessons. Yes, if you paid attention in class, you don't hear. This is present. That's why you use the past tense here. If you paid attention in class, you would or you might understand uh, you uh, you might understand the lessons number seven aisha didn't tell her parents about the problem so they couldn't help her aisha didn't past here tell her parents about the problem so they couldn't help her very good if aisha had told had told past perfect her parents about the problem they could have helped her Excellent. Number eight, we didn't have time, so we didn't visit him in the hospital. We didn't have time. Past. 
So the answer would be, if we had had time, we could or we would have visited him in the hospital. Exercise B here, write what, uh, write what you would do or would have done in a situation, use an implied uh, conditional. The first one is already done. Ali uses his friend's computer and accidentally deletes an important file. He, de he decided not to tell his friend. So what would you have done? You say here, I would have told my friend the truth, of course. So the first situation, when Aisha got home from uh, the bookstore, she realized that she hadn't been charged for one of the books she bought. She went back to the bookstore to pay for it. What would you have done? You realized that one of the books, you didn't pay for it. Aisha went back to the bookstore to pay for it. What would you have done? Would you do the same thing as Aisha or something different? For me, I would have called them and told them about the mistake. Then later, of course, I would go to pay for it. So I would have called them, the bookstore, and uh, told them about the mistake. Number two, while pulling out of the supermarket parking lot, Hamid hits another car. There is a small dent on the other car. Hamid can't decide what he should do. There's a small dent on the other car. Of course, the owner of the other car is inside the supermarket. Hamid can't decide what he should do. So what would you do there? When you want to get out of the uh, car park, you accidentally scratch or hit another car. What would you do? What's the moral thing to do? Of course, um, I would have waited for the other driver to come out. So I would wait. What would you do? I would wait for the other driver to come out. Out. Or maybe if he takes too long, I would just leave my phone number, then we can work it out. Number three, Fatima bought a new dress. She tries, uh, she tries it on and asks what Maha thinks of it. Maha doesn't like it, but says she does. What would you have done? So Fatima, when she tries her new dress, Maha didn't like the dress, but she said that she liked it. What would you have done? Would you do the same as Maha or not? Of course, this is uh, your own answer. I would have told Fatima that I like the dress too, same as Maha. Number four, uh, Mona's teenage daughter has seemed, un uh, has seemed unhappy lately, but won't talk to Mona. Mona is worried her daughter accidentally leaves her journal on the couch. Mona reads it. So what would you have done? Would you do the same as her mother and read the, uh, her daughter's journal or not? Especially that she is worried because uh, her daughter is unhappy lately. Is it ethical to read someone's private journals? Of course not, but maybe because her mother, she is worried. So this is a dilemma here. I wouldn't have read the journal. The correct thing is I wouldn't have read the journal, but maybe as a mother, she is an exceptional answer. Number five, Sarah brings her grandmother a nice uh, dessert. Her grandmother tells her how delicious it is and how impressed she is uh, that Sarah made it. Sarah bought the dessert, uh, Sarah, bought, uh, Sarah bought the uh, dessert from a store. She decides not to tell her grandmother. So her grandmother thinks that Sarah made the dessert, but in reality, Sarah bought it from a store. What would you do if you're in Sarah's place? Would you tell the grandmother, no, I bought it, or would you just go with it? So I would tell her that I bought the dessert. Of course, this is the uh, moral and ethical uh, way to go, is to tell the uh, truth. Exercise C here, use the cue words to write a new sentence with as though or as if. Bianca is not a queen, behaving as if. She is behaving as if 
she were a queen. She's behaving like a queen. She is behaving as if she were the queen. Is she the queen? Of course not. So number one, I'm not dreaming. Feel as though be. So the correct answer, very good. I feel as, uh, as though I were dreaming. So be here is where. I feel as though I were dreaming. Very good. Number two, we are not rich. Spending money as though. We are not rich. This is our reality. We're not rich. Very good. We're spending money as though we were rich. So we're spending, we're spending money as though we were rich. We're spending a lot of money. Number three, Asma doesn't like Sophie. Doesn't like Sophie. This is the reality. Acts as though. Very good. Asma, uh, Asma acts as though she liked Sophie. But in reality, she doesn't. Very good. Number four, you didn't see something scary. You did not see something scary. Look as if. Very good. You look as if you had seen something scary. There's something wrong with your eyes or your face. You look as if you had seen something scary, but in reality, you didn't. Number five, Adil is not an old man. Walks as though. Yes, excellent. Adil walks as though he were an old man, but in reality, Adil is not. Maybe he's still a teenager. Number six, you don't own this house, behaving and as if. Yes, very good. You are behaving as, you, uh, as if you owned the house, but you don't own it. You just behave like it. Number seven, he didn't take public speaking lessons, speaks as if. Yes, very good. He is uh, behaving as he took public speaking lessons lessons. He is behaving as if he took public speaking lessons. Number eight, Faris needs this job, talking as though. Yes, Faris is talking as though he didn't need the job, but he needs it. Number nine, he doesn't know the answer, acting as if. Yes, he's acting as if he knew the answer, but in reality, he doesn't know the answer. And with that, we reach the end of this lesson. See you next lesson, inshallah. Subhanakallah, bihamdik. Ashhadu anna la ilaha anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum.